Today, soldering has reached the level of a fine art, and it's become a vital one in many fields. Whether you're a hobbyist, weekend tinkerer, or professional, buying your first soldering station can be a confusing and often overwhelming task. Now, up until just a few years ago, if you wanted to acquire a soldering station that was of decent quality, you had to accept the fact that you were going to be spending some cash. But these days, there's a lot more hardware that's conducive to almost anyone's budget and to anyone's skill level. Now today, I'm going to talk about what I personally consider to be an excellent first soldering station that's great both for the hobbyist and that weekend pro without breaking the bank. Now the most common request I receive from you guys is to recommend a soldering station that's both affordable and a good performer. Now my answer to that question has always been the secondary market. Go on eBay and find a used FX951 like this one for a couple hundred bucks. Or if you're wanting an even better value, get on eBay and you can find an FP102 station like this for 150 bucks or less. But buying used isn't always the best idea. You never really know what you're getting. So for the past two months, I've made it my personal mission to seek out and evaluate a new soldering station that met my personal standards in both quality and performance and wasn't predicated on 30-year-old technology, but most importantly, comes in at a price point of less than $75. I think I've done that, so let's take a look. Now before we begin reviewing the actual soldering performance, we're going to be looking at some safety stuff. And we're going to start in the back here with the AC mains input. We're going to break open the top and we're going to take a look at some stuff on the power board. Let's take a look. Okay, let's just very carefully pull this top off. And we have a great, great view here of the inside. So we're looking at the power board and pretty much the logic of the soldering station is right here. But let's start with the power because this is the most interesting part in my opinion. Now, we're looking at the AC mains input side. And this is where the quality really started to take off between this unit and the other units that I looked at. If you take a look here, our line neutral and ground AC lines, these are hard soldered into the main board. And on all the other units that I looked at, uh, the uh, input side of the AC was either very poorly crimped or, yeah, it was just poorly crimped onto the main board, and I did not like that. This is a nice permanent connection, and it looks really good. Uh, but up from that, we have, um, we have an inductor here, which is just a little common mode choke. Uh, we have a power filter cap. Uh, we've got another inline fuse. And then we uh, have these nice, beefy heat sinks uh, on both sides. Um, this is a, um, what is that part? That is a, uh, that's a 2200 seat. Okay, that's a, that's a power rectifier. Uh, and it has this nice heat sink. So this is going to dissipate heat really nicely. Uh, and we have a few diodes here in our main power transformer. Uh, and on the other side, I think we have a little FET here. But I've got to tell you guys, just because it's from China does not mean that the quality is always bad. Um, this is a fantastic little design, and it's very well done. Uh, the power board here, I give a solid 8 out of 10. Um, it was just very well done, and the other units uh, that look identical to this on the outside, whew, I can't recommend those, um, but, but this is excellent. So let's move on and uh, look at some other parts. Okay, so we looked at the power board. Let's uh, see if we can look at the brains of this thing. And See, this is the only thing connecting this to the power board, so I want to take that off, move this to the side. And this is just, this is the front face of the soldering station, and again, fairly well designed. We have a little beeper here. Um, I think this is a CR, maybe a 1632. Uh, this is just for the RTC or the, or the real-time clock. This just keeps the time. Um, and here we have, it's an STM. 32 microcontroller. Uh, that's a pretty powerful little pick micro uh, that controls the uh, it's the brains of the operation and you know the small attention to detail here look how all of the soldered connections here to the DIN input they're nice and heat shrinked. I mean this is really well done I mean on other units it's just sloppily soldered in together they really really kinda you know went above and beyond I, I have no problems recommending this uh, from a de design perspective, it, it's just fantastic. And for $49, I mean, my God, I mean, it's, it's, it's truly remarkable. So, you know, design-wise, everything looks pretty solid here. And uh, the quality is just pretty excellent. 
Uh, so let's kind of see this bad boy in action. Now before we jump into that action, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Now obviously we're looking at the back again where the AC power comes in, but look at this. In the back, we have some protection. We have this inline fuse off of the AC input. How nice is that? Excellent. But while we're back here, let's see if our soldering tip is referencing earth ground. I want to get my multimeter. I want to set it to continuity. And we're going to see if we can buzz and have continuity between the earth reference and the soldering tip. So let me just get my probes here situated. There's the earth. And let's just come here to the tip. See if we get a buzz. Excellent. ESD friendly. It just keeps getting better and better. Alrighty. Let's test her out. Now, as the front faceplate suggests, this is a T12 soldering station. Well, what does that mean? That means that this soldering station takes real HAKO T12 and T15 tips. Now, the great thing about a T12 or T15 tip station is that the tips are directly driven by the station, which means you have excellent thermal output capacity and your startup or heat up time is virtually non-existent. By the time you turn this station on, within probably six to seven seconds, you're up to full operating temperature, so there is no waiting. Let's turn this on and let's give it a little, uh, a little test here. And I think I have this set to maybe 285 degrees. So let's see, yep, I have it set to 280 degrees Celsius. We're already up to 262, 270, and we are up to temperature that fast. It's pretty remarkable. Now a few things here on the readout. Uh, obviously this top left number is what our temperature is set to. Um, the middle number is our current temperature. Uh, and this, this will come down in just a few seconds to 280 degrees. The bottom left number is our current voltage output. Uh, the 25 degrees Celsius, this little number here is basically just the room temperature. Um, this is military time, it's 732 here now. And this top number up here is kind of cool. Um, it's, it's how much power is outputting from the iron itself. So as you can see here, it's idling pretty good at around, I'd say on average, 8% power or 8% load. If we were to take our iron and we were to touch it or make contact with something with a lot of thermal mass, like a big thick ground plane that's going to soak a bunch of heat away, you would see this number go up because it's going to have to deliver more power to maintain this 280 degrees Celsius temperature. Now we're going to go over just a few quick things. If you want to change the set temperature, you have a rotary encoder here, and this is where all of the adjustments are made. So you're just going to give it one quick press, and this is where you set the temperature. Now normally, I like to work with anything between 285 and maybe 315 degrees, and it's currently set to move in five degree increments. So I want to set this to, let's say 315, and I'm going to press the rotary encoder once more. And just like that, it jumps right up there. And we're at 318, 319. Uh, after a few seconds, this will come back down to where it should be, around 315 degrees Celsius. So, you know, that's how to quickly change the temperature. But you have so many freaking options with this, with this station. Uh, that STM32 is really doing a lot here to control this iron. So if we do a long hold on the rotary encoder, whoop, I have, whoops, whoops, damn it, I hit the boost. Um, if I do a long press on the rotary encoder, we get menu options. Now the first two are standby and sleep, and they're sort of the same, but they're really not. Uh, standby is just if the iron is not being used, and it can detect if the handpiece is being used or not, uh, we can set this so that after 10 minutes of no use, uh, the iron is going to cool down to 50 degrees Celsius, and in order for the iron to come back online, uh, we can shake it. So when you basically pull the handpiece out of this, out of the um, handpiece holder, uh, the iron will know that, or the station will know that, and it will uh, it will come back online. Or we can set this to switch, which basically means after 10 minutes, the iron goes into its standby mode. If we want to get the iron back up to operating temperature, we just press the rotary encoder button like that, and it comes back online. But I want to set this to shake because it's so convenient. 
Now to get out of this, we'll just do a long hold. And there are several options here that, that you can go through. Um, you know, you can turn on, you can turn on um, specific tips and you can turn off specific tips. That's pretty neat. Um, you can stepping, uh, you can change the increment of, you know, and how many degrees you can dial in the temperature. I have this set to five. And, you know, you have a screensaver, which I have this on. You know, it comes on within five minutes. And you just have so much stuff here. You can turn the, the, the buzzer on or off. I like to keep that on. Uh, you can show the date and time, the real-time clock. That's where you adjust the time. Um, all sorts of stuff here. So, you know, you can really spend a good 20 or 30 minutes going through all of the options and dialing this system in to your specifications and to the way you want it to operate. And that's why I love this station. Well, it's one of the many reasons. You literally have control. So we're going to back out of here, and we're back to the main station. Those are just a little bit of the controls. Let's see how well this thing solders. Now, here we have an NES mainboard, and I think this makes for a pretty damn good benchmark for what we're wanting to look at. Uh, we have a lot of nice, thick ground floods here that are going to soak thermal energy away so we can really determine how well our iron is performing when it really needs to use energy. Uh, and we can also do a lot of reflowing here to see how well and how thoroughly we can wet and reflow these joints uh, with some nice fresh solder to see see how well that's working there too. So we'll start with that. Uh, we'll reflow a few of these dip packages here. Uh, and then we'll check out the uh, the grounding here. So let's zoom in and let's do that. But you know, before we do that, I have to tell you, the handpiece that ships with this particular iron is phenomenal. I love it. It feels like it's an extension of to my body. Um, I feel like I have complete and total control, and that I'm not I'm not guessing distance where things are. It's just so close. And you know, I have, you know, I have nothing but Hako equipment here. This is in, you know, a, a 2028 handpiece. And I honest to God have to tell you guys, I really prefer this handpiece over this handpiece. It's not that it's 20 times better or a thousand times better. It just feels better and it performs just as well. It's all a matter of what feels good in your hands. That's what she said. But also with the tips, because, you know, they're they're T15 and T12, you just take your tip pad here, pull your old tip pad, and if you out, and if you need to change your tip, grab your new tip, put it in just like that. It's really that simple. And so I just, you know, wanted to talk about this because I did not want to leave this behind. The handpiece is outstanding. I mean it's kind of generic, but it's 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 just so good. At any rate, let's zoom in, in here and uh Let's reflow some joints and uh, let's just see how well this thing performs. Okay, I have my knife edge tip here and real quick, this is a generic Kester uh, K series uh, knife edge tip. This is not a Hako tip and let me tell you guys something. I have all of their tips and these, these generic fake clone tips, they work pretty damn well for what they are, especially for the price. So having said that, let's just... Uh, Let's just try to reflow here and see if we can wet some of these joints. Now I am set to 288 degrees, I'm sorry, 285 degrees, and let's see how good of a job it's doing. So yeah, we're coming right in here and we're definitely able to reflow that at 285 degrees. That's pretty good. Let's try the one underneath here. And the, all of this is, this, this is just one big huge ground flood, so uh, it's going to soak away all of that heat and all of that energy. Let's see how well our little knife tip does. And that's that's clearly gone molten, and we're, we're getting some good wetting action there. That works fantastic. Now let's turn this around, and let's try to reflow some dip pins. Okay, right here we're looking at part of the expansion connector, and I'm just going to clean my tip off here a bit. I'm going to bring some solder in, and I want to just reflow these, just as an exercise. So I want to introduce some solder here, and we're just going to go down the line. No flux, we're just going to see how well the iron performs and how, how good of a job it's doing at putting that energy into these, into these plated through holes and, and, and just how much energy we're getting in there. And I don't see anything going cold. I mean, it's really doing a really, really good job. 
just like that. Come to the end. Let me clean my tip off here, and I can get rid of that bridge. Like so. Just like that. Phenomenal performance. Let's move to something surface mount. Now we have our D16 tip, our generic D16 tip, and I have our tweezers and a resistor here to replace the one that's missing. And we flux this up, so I'm just going to I'm going to advance this 0805 package into its uh, landing here, like so. I'm going to apply just a little bit of flux here and a little bit of a little bit of fun, just like that. There's one side. I'm going to rotate the board around, like so. Well, no, yeah, actually, I'm going to re I'm going to rotate it. I want to come in here on this side, like so. Just like that. I'm telling you, I mean, for precision work too, I mean, it, no problems whatsoever. That's a little dodgy because eh, I can't see too well. I've got too many damn things in my way, but it works, and it works great. And we're still set to 285 degrees. Let's have a little fun here. Let's say that... Ah, the 7374 driver is not uh, not working as, as it should, and maybe there's a connection issue. So let's say we're going to reflow that thing. I'm just going to advance that same D12 tip in here, and we're just going to sort of work these pins in like so. Do a nice little quick reflow, like so. Just like that. Let's say we're going to set some jumpers here for whatever reason. We're going to short that jumper. We're going to short that jumper. Fantastic. Let's say we're going to pretend these pads. We're going to get our, our uh, ribbon cable in here because we're going to make our connections. I'm just going to go down the line here like so. Perfect. You couldn't ask for that to work any better. Well, guys, that pretty much concludes this video. Um, I, I want to thank everybody who's really been patient with me. Um, I have been wanting to do this video for about a year now, and you guys have kept and kept asking me about it. And I'm so glad that I had a couple of months here to really block out so I could do a real thorough test on this iron and put it through the paces. Never in a million years would I recommend something that I didn't thoroughly test myself. And with Banggood.com, I actually have a good little deal going. Um, the links down below are affiliate links, but I have worked closely with them to ensure that the links that you click below will get you exactly the same equipment that I am using. Remember, there are a dozen permutations of this Kester uh, T12 soldering station, and it even goes by other names too, but um, the other ones that I looked at, <laughs> there's just a lot of things I did not like. So if you want to get this unit uh, spec'd this way, uh, check out the links below. Uh, that includes the soldering holder, the, the, the handpiece holder, all of those tips, and the station itself with that, with that handpiece. And I'm telling you guys, for the past month, I've really not even used my Hako stations. This thing just does that good of a job. It's that reliable thus far, and the performance is just there. So having said that, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time. Take care for now.